Okay, I've got a couple would you rather questions. I know you guys love these when we do them on a Friday night. So lean to the right if it's the first answer. Lean to the left if it's the second answer. So here's the first question. Would you rather be incredibly funny or incredibly smart? Which one? Would you rather have a tail that can't grab anything or wings that can't fly? Which way did you lean? Okay, would you rather a cat-sized elephant or an elephant-sized cat? This one's really good. Would you rather a ham sandwich with ice cream or ice cream with pieces of ham in it? Always super fun to think about things we don't normally think about. So question, did you lean more to the right or more to the left? I went on a bike ride and I found out something that was absolutely new, something I'd never thought of before. Well, to be honest, it wasn't that it was just new, but what I was thinking was actually wrong. You see, I always thought that you're supposed to feed bread to ducks, right? Take the bread down to the lake. But this sign actually says, don't feed the ducks bread because it's actually going to hurt them. What? So I'm doing a little experiment. I opened the bag of bread and I put this teeny tiny little bit into the lake and look at these ducks came right away. So even though that bread is bad for these ducks, they don't even know it. They're so used to coming for this bread. They were here like in a second because they can't wait. So this is why the bread is actually bad for ducks. It's bad for them because it gets caught and sort of like their throat and then it would actually make them not be able to eat food afterwards. It can also make them feel full and there's absolutely no nutrition in bread for ducks. So they'd be full and then not eat the food that they're supposed to. Another thing is birds are supposed to migrate and if they're fed all the time, sort of artificially, they may not migrate like they need to. The Bible says that some of the things that we feed our mind and that we think about are not good for us. So I'm not feeder mine, I'm not talking about like hot dogs and candies and stuff, but some of the things that we believe. And it affects the way that we think about God, ourselves, and other people. So, question. How do we know if the things that we're thinking are actually good thoughts or if they're bad thoughts? How are we gonna know the difference? Hmm, good thoughts or bad thoughts? Do you know what? Philippians 4 verse 8 makes it really easy to know the difference. And it says, always think about what is true. Here's a question for you. Does what we think even matter if nobody else knows? When I was in grade two in Mrs. Dawson's class, my friends and I had this secret language. We had written it all out, hid it in the desk, and I thought nobody would ever find it until one day I'd been sick after school or office school and one of my friends came to me and she said we're up all late she's like Sandra Mrs. Dawson found that list that you made up of all those secret words I'm like what I knew I was going to get in trouble so the next day when I was back in school Mrs. Dawson said Sandra come to the front of the class and I did and I got in trouble because she said it wasn't very nice to make a secret language that nobody else heard. How did Mrs. Dawson find the secret language in my desk? Psalm 139, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, and it says, Lord, you know everything about me. You know when I sit down, you know when I get up, you know everything that I'm thinking, even though you're far away. God knows everything that's in our heart. He knows everything that we're thinking. There's no secret thoughts with God. And that's because he loves us. I found a journal or a diary of mine that's really old. I'm not even sure how old it is. I've been using a paper clip to see if I could open it because I've got some thoughts inside of here that I haven't seen for a long time. Can't get it open, so what do you think? Use the scissors, let's see. I want to see some of these thoughts and see what they say. I wonder what grade they're from. 
Oh my God. I just opened this diary. This has been years and years since it's ever been open, just to see the thoughts and the things that I was thinking of. And there are some really good thoughts. Here's one, and this is from March 1st, and it was actually a long time ago. I was in grade, well, some of these it looks like grade six or grade seven. It says, I'm always happy on the first day of every month because I think about the different ways I can serve God during the month. Sometimes I don't always show it, but I'm really thankful for my family. How cool to go back and to see the way that I was thinking when I was in grade seven. What are some thoughts that you have had that have been stuck in your mind for a long time? Some really good thoughts. You know what? If I was gonna be honest, I know not my, my diary, my journal probably captured a lot of really good things, but there's probably some things that aren't so good that have been stuck in my mind for a long time that aren't even true. So if you've got a piece of paper, why don't you grab it? I'm gonna draw a picture. And I want you to do the same. So you get your paper and your pen, draw a picture of something that you've been thinking for a long time that, you know what, you know that hmm, probably not a great thought. It's probably not helping you. So I'm gonna draw a picture, I mentioned it before. This is a picture of me and uh, I'm gonna just do a stick version and I'll put nice long hair. I actually used to have really short hair when I was a kid and I'm gonna draw a picture of my big sister because one of the things that was a thought that I had that was a thought that didn't really help me all that much when I was a kid is that I used to think that I was not as good as my sister. I always wanted to be like her, but I never thought I was as good of her, as her. And I don't know why, but it wasn't a great thought and it didn't really help me. So what did you draw? What's the thing that you've been thinking that isn't a great thought? So how do we keep those thoughts that aren't true out of our mind? How do we get rid of them? A bike helmet? A hockey mask? Scuba gear? Oh, a second. Scuba gear doesn't protect your mind. In Ephesians 6, 17, God tells us how to get rid of those thoughts that aren't true. And he says, put on the helmet of salvation. And the reason he says that is because he knows that if we remember that he loves us, he created us, he died on the cross and came alive again to forgive us, that he absolutely cares about every single thing that's in our life and that to him, we are his favorite child. It helps us for all those things that we're thinking that aren't true. It helps us to look at them and to say, do you know what? They're not true because of God's incredible love for us. So remember Ephesians 6 verse 17, put on the helmet of salvation. How do you know if your thoughts are good or not? You need to look at them and to think, think what am I thinking about? And see if it lines up with how much God loves you and what he did for you when he died on the cross. We started off talking about the ducks and how ducks will keep eating food even though it's not good for them. Sometimes we have thoughts in our head and we keep thinking it even if it's not good for us. Got some thoughts that you've been thinking about that you wanna get rid of, you know what to do. Remember what Jesus did for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you that you love us so much that you died and came alive again. And because of that, that you have power over everything. And God, you tell us in your word for us to, um, to think of things that are true and to take captive all the things in our mind and to make sure it lines up with what you say and what your word says and what Jesus did for us. So God, I pray that you'll help us to do that in Jesus' name, amen. So I'll see you guys. Make sure you check out Sam's small group activity that's coming up next and it connects with the video beside on creation. So take care, you guys. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. It is Small Group Sam here. We have a super fun exercise for you guys today, so let's just jump straight into it. 
On the screen here, we're gonna shuffle through a bunch of different items and we're gonna talk a little bit about the ones that we land on. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how we can creatively show God's love to the people around us using those items. Let's do it. Look at that, a thinking of you or get well soon card. You can make one for a friend or a family member who's sick or maybe is just feeling a little down to let them know that you're thinking of them and that you care about them. It's super encouraging. Next one. Ooh, a muffin tin. Are you a baker? You could make some tasty treats for a new neighbor or for the friends in your class to let them know that you care. This is the last one for today and it looks here like we have a report card with some really awesome grades. Maybe you're really good in school, but not everybody is always really good right away. So maybe you could use your talents to help your classmates that need it. Just imagine what you could do with all of these things. Pick one you can try this week to creatively show the people around you God's love. We were all made in God's image. That means we all reflect a little bit of God and of God's creativity. Figuring out what you're good at is a great way to see how you can creatively help others just like we talked about today. Explore the different things you can do for others this week. Maybe even try some of the things we talked about today. Now, as always, thank you for joining me and I will see you all again next week.